I want to talk about a piece of software I've been writing, um, early, early prototype stages that's built according to these principles. Uh, it's called Where's the Party? You can find it at mirrorparty.org. Uh, there's, there's like two halves or faces to this solution, and uh, those, are, those are the two names. Where's the Party is a scalable, censorship-resistant mirror network in pure JavaScript. Um, and it's designed to allow several <coughs> orders of magnitude greater participation in such a thing than anything else possible. I mean, not possible. I hope it's more possible than anything else that's out there right now. Um, um, the best way I can explain this is to give you guys a little demo. If you want to follow with me along, that would be really cool. Um, this is a site, a demo site. Uh, it's oppressedistan.com. It's news from the fictional country of Oppressedistan where they um, turn off the internet and kick puppies and just <laughs> otherwise uncool and right? And so if you go and browse around the site, and I'll do that here in a second, you might notice something interesting. And if you don't, that's actually cool too. So this site is actually hosted across multiple domains. So if you see up in this address bar here, this is the same content, but it's hosted on a totally different site. Totally, totally different domain. And there's some JavaScript running under the hood here that will bounce you around between these different nodes. Right? So now we're back at oppressedstand.com. We have been on S3. So there's two or three uh, different. Sites in this network, right? We're just browsing around and just keep switching, switching posts. Anyway, yeah, makes sense. Okay, so the cool thing about this is that you don't have to install anything. You don't have to install anything. And this is all just uh, JavaScript in a browser, right? It's actually CoffeeScript, um, which is a language that compiles directly into JavaScript. It's much nicer than writing lots of graphics. Um, this is the first serious piece of JavaScript I've ever actually written. Uh, and I'm going to talk some more about some of the stuff I'm hoping to do down, down the road. Um, why is this cool? So why is this cool? Um, this is cool because, right, like I said, users can browse a mirror network without having to install anything. Um, this should work all the way back to IE6. This should work on your phone. It also lets us split up really large mirror sites across multiple machines. So. One of Telecomics projects is a site called Streisand.me, which is uh, our, mirror, our mirror project in which we get, when we have something that's censored, we go out and find volunteers who want to help mirror it. That has been technically challenging. That setting up a mirror site requires some, some degree of technical skill. This focuses on just dumb web hosts. So S3, Dropbox, shared hosting, that sort of thing. Where you can just literally unzip the tarball and participate in that. The other problem we had on the Streisand project was that sometimes these mirror sites, or content that needs to be mirrored, is huge. The HP Gary leak, for example, was nine gigs of HTML and malware and PDFs and stuff, uh, and about six gigs ASIP. That's not a huge amount of data but it's still a several hour download, right? And it's also beyond the capacity for a lot of people's web hosting. 
So if you want as many nodes as possible, you'd like to chunk that up. Right? You'd like to break that up into chunks. The way this code is working is that it uses the same logic for the error condition when a mirror is DMCA, neither drops off in that entirely, or just has that content removed, to do fractional mirror. And so that if a particular page 404s, you go and look for it on the other nodes. And it doesn't matter why that 404, it could have just never been there to begin with, or it could have gotten taken down. So this lets us split up like a 9 gig site into you know, 100 90 meg chunks, right? You can do replication, you can do stuff like that. The other concern in these environments is uh, filtering, is, is governments, right, telcos, sniffing content with transparent proxies for regexes on URLs, regexes on content, stuff like that. And Brian Warner has actually helped me a lot with the crypto parts because that's not my strength, and so thanks to him. But there's like 36 layers of crypto we can add on top of this, so that what is being sent over the wire is not plain HTML, but maybe an encrypted JSON blob. There are JavaScript libraries for implementing RSA. They're probably really slow, but who cares? Slow is faster than not at all. The use of encryption here is for two reasons. Uh, first, uh, to detect and alert on um, attempts to muck with the content, to train to change in flight. So basically, just basic signing. That you send a public key along with the content and a signature, and you can use that to verify what got through. The pages themselves will also be encrypted so that you can't do simple regex monitoring. And the decryption key is going to be sent along, so it's not for privacy, right? Because you have you no know what you're communicating to the public, right? It's a broadcast system. But rather to make it more difficult for a government wiretapping their network to detect and block content, because it just looks like random noise. Okay, so that, I, I, there's more, more discussion of the details of the threat model and the details of the crypto on, on mirrorparty.org. The second half of this project aims to automate the process of finding and distributing content for mirror nodes. So there's a matching problem where you need to match some sensor content to volunteer posts. The solution I have in mind here is for something I call social mirroring. So I like people to be able to volunteer their machines or their S3 or their Dropbox to host content that's censored, right? In a way that's technically easy and enables broad public participation. Because I think this is the sort of thing people want to help with, right? But the technically sophisticated people just, it's hard, it's hard. Mirrorparty.org is gonna be a centralized site, it's going to be totally optional, um, for doing exactly that. Where folks who have some censored content will need to get it, either put it on a BitTorrent, maybe drop it on a file share site, in some way that an automated service can go find it by tagging it on the, the pirate bank, maybe party with me, looking for particular search terms, crawling, crawling file share sites. Downloading this content, applying the magic JavaScript, munging it up into chunks, and pushing it out to volunteer hosts. Right, so you pass, when you sign up to volunteer your host, you give, give this site uh, an S3 upload URL, or an FTP password, or an SSH login, or whatever means you want to have. Us push content out to you. The social aspect comes in in two ways. Uh, well, first, you need some sort of system up here where volunteers can specify what content they're willing to accept. So for example, I might be in the US and there might be certain content that I can't post because it's illegal in my jurisdiction. Whereas somebody else might be in Sweden and they don't have that problem and they have a more open policy. And so some ability to specify your preferences for 
uh, legal, what like what countries, you know, like what your legal risk is, um, what politically you would prefer, like what languages or kind of what areas this content is coming from. But I like as much as possible because people are volunteering their services for them to have some sort of. Uh, way of providing input into what content actually is hosted by the network. And so I'm imagining something that's like Reddit cross mirroring, where it's some way that people can upvote what content deserve is mirror worthy, right? Because there's going to be a limited amount of server space out there. Um, maybe weighting that by how much space people have to contribute, maybe weighting it by how much they, uh, sorry, um, how long they've participated, things like that, and in a way that doesn't unduly disadvantage uh, new or smaller users. I think that might be it. Yeah, I think I think this there's a huge amount of work to be done done on on where's the party and your party go to work. I would guesstimate there is about a full time task for one person for about two years. Like there's a lot of code that needs to be to be written here, um, and so I'm certainly looking for help if people think it's cool. Um, I'm also really looking for feedback, um, just on the design, on the use cases, questions. And so, yeah. Thanks so much. Do you have questions? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I know when these things happen, there's tons of people on Twitter that say, "I wish I could help. I want to do something." I think your idea of the uh, "Where's the party" is super cool because if, if you can get to that state where the average person or the novice can help. I think you have a ton of people that, that would be willing to. Uh, it seems like you touched on some ideas, but you're, you're really going that route, if I understood right, to have that be simple and easy for, the, for those people to set up uh, like mirrors and stuff. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, you know, when I talk about software passing the grandma test, that needs to not only pass that test for people on the ground in Egypt, say, but if we can pass, make the, the solutions we build pass that test for volunteers in the West who want to help, um, that's going to increase participation and that's going to make our efforts more successful. And yeah, that's that's what I'm aiming to do with, with the hosting side, the hosting side um, on your party. Anyone else? Yeah, let me get back on IRC. Uh, if anybody has questions they'd like to ask about this stuff, um, air.mozilla.org, there's a little IRC chat which is the bottom. Hello, Internet. Please ask me questions. Um, pad is, uh, can somebody tell this guy where the pad is? Um, why is RSA used? Um, I'm going to largely see because Brian recommended it. Um, my strength is not the nitty gritty of cryptography. Um, it's a fairly strong key. Why do you use RSA? It's been a while since we talked about this, but I think what we were aiming at was for the content to be signed so yes. that uh, an attacker could not inject different content and patch it off the video. Yeah, exactly. It's used for signing purposes, not encryption. Okay, yeah, so the, the RSA is currently used for signing purposes and not encryption. The, Governments also, right, if you're if you're the ISP and you own that cable, you can do whatever you want. You can not only block content, you can muck around with it, right? We've seen this with people doing ad injection on on web pages. 
And so they're able to do that. And so by signing, signing the content, uh, you're able to at least detect that. You do need to trust the JavaScript that is downloaded from the server. That's kind of impossible right now. There's no way to verify that the code itself that is running the encryption algorithm hasn't been tampered with. Okay. We can try the best we can on that. Right, so uh, LWC asks, if someone shares a link, then the recipient, will the recipient retrieve the intended content, um, regardless of which node? Yeah, and that's the basic model, is that you can start from any of these, any of, a valid page on any, any of the nodes. There's an interesting question here, how do you find your entry point, right? This is the classic problem in peer-to-peer -peer networks. And in some ways, that's out of scope, uh, that you find your entry node the same way you find any other link, in an email, in a message written on chalk on the sidewalk, a direct message from Didi, however, however you're getting through your URLs, like, you get them the same way here. But once you have those, once you've found the party, you can tell other people where it is through those same out-of-band out channels. Anyone else? Okay. Great. Thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure.